Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 105 Intermediate Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 1.7. 1.7 is actually broken into three separate videos. And in the first one, we're going to look at uh, absolute values in, uh, excuse me, compound inequalities in the terms of intersections. That's part one. Part two, we'll look at unions. And the third part, we'll look at the absolute value inequalities. So the first thing we're going to do is define the difference between an intersection and a union. Well, if we have two sets of number, in set A, we have the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I'm just going to write 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is the set of the values for A, 1, 2, 3, and 4. In the set of B, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, we have 2, 4, oh, excuse me. 2, 4, 6, and 8. When we're talking about an intersection, we use this symbol. And this is the symbol for an intersection. It's also called an AND statement. So when we're looking at an intersection, it says what is within set A and set B. So it's what they both have in common. So the intersection is where they overlap. In set A, we have the values 2 and 4. And in set B, we have the values 2 and 4. So this area is called the intersection. And we denote the intersection with this symbol. Now, if we're going to define a union, we call that an OR statement. The union is an OR statement. So if we want to find the union of A and B, what's in one or the other? Well, that would include what's in here or in here. It would be all the values. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. All six of these values would be in one or the other. So we're looking at the entire uh, set of A or B. Let's look at some examples where we look at an intersection here. Now, hopefully we recall and we reviewed uh, what these symbols are. We have less than. So we have ax plus b is less than c, which is a linear inequality. We could have also the symbols greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than, or equal to. And we're also going to introduce uh, interval notation. And hopefully, you've reviewed those. Now, if we have the set x such that x is greater than negative 6 and, which is a union, and x such that x is less than 1, we want to look at these two together and see where they overlap. Well, let's take it one piece at a time initially. If we look at the first set, x such that x is greater than negative 6, on a number line, if this value is negative 6, and if I know interval notation, I use a parenthesis here because it does not include the endpoint, any value to the right is going to be greater than negative 6. So it says this value, x, is greater than negative 6. So this would be the graph of this piece of our intersection. If we look at this here, it says x such that x is less than 1. Well, if 1 is over here, x is some value less than 1. But it doesn't include it because it's just a less than symbol. So we use that parenthesis. Now, if we want to find the intersection, and notice I used and. They're interchangeable. What are the values that satisfy this one and this one at the same time? Well, let's graph them both together. If this is the value negative 6 and this is the value 1, if we put them on the same graph, the area in between their parentheses would be the solution. So their intersection, this one would continue that way. This one continues this way. Where they overlap are the solutions that solve this one and this one at the same time. So any value in between. Maybe I pick a test point like 0. 0 is between negative 6 and 1. And I could put it in here and say 0 is greater than negative 6, true statement. 0 is less than 1, also a true statement. So that one solution solved this one and this one. And that's why we call it an AND statement. When we have AND statements or intersections, we can write them as double inequalities. So let's take a look at this one and write, them, write it as a double inequality. Well, if we have this value x is greater than negative 6, let's just switch that around for a moment. Negative 6 is less than x. That's the same thing as saying x is greater than negative 6. Negative 6 is less than x. We also have x is less than 1. So x is less than 1, 
and x is greater than negative 6. When we have and statements, we can write them as a double inequality. Now, there are some things we always have to be aware of when dealing with and statements and double inequalities is writing them in the proper format. And one way to check it's in the proper format is we always write it from the least number to the greatest number from left to right. Just like our number line, these values are smaller, these values are greater. So when we look at this, one way to check that it's in a proper notation is to cover up the middle value. Does it still make a true statement? Negative 6 is less than 1. That's a true statement. If I cover up the other side, negative 6 is less than 1, it's still a true statement. So I know that my double inequality is written in the proper format. So let's go over here and check a few examples where we have some double inequalities written and to see if they're in the proper format. Here we have negative 3 is less than x, and x is greater than 4. Well, <clears throat> if we look at it, our values are written from smallest to greatest. Negative 3 on this side, positive 4 on that side. It is from least to greatest. But if I cover this up, is negative 3 greater than 4? No. So it makes a non-true statement. If any part of this is not true, then it's not in the proper format. So this is not a true statement. It's not in the proper format. If we look at this one, we have negative 2 is less than x, and x is less than negative 3. If I cover up this section, I can see, well, it, is, it isn't written from least to greatest. Negative 2 is greater than negative 3. But this statement says otherwise, so it's not true. If I covered this up, it would still not be true. So it's not true on either end of this. So that's not true. It's not in the proper format. Now, if we look at this, we have negative 4 is greater than or equal to x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Well, I notice that this is not in the proper format for the reason that negative 4 is a larger value than negative 6, and they have to be written from least to greatest. But if I cover this up, it still makes a true statement. Negative 4 is greater than or equal to negative 6. That's true. If I cover that up, it says the same thing. It's still a true statement. So being that it's true, it's not in the proper format, we can rewrite it to be in the proper format. The least number is first, and the greatest number is to the right. So from left to right, it goes from least to greatest. Now, if we think about this, x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Well, since I move this number to this side, I have to flip that sign. If I could lift it off the board and turn it around, that's what I would have. Now, same thing here. Since we move the 4 to the other side, we can switch that around. And we have negative 6 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to negative 4. Both of these say the same thing, but this one was not in the proper format. It's always written least to greatest. So even though it was a true statement, it wasn't in the proper format. So we have to be aware of that. And we see different scenarios where, well, if any part of it's not true, it's not a valid inequality. If it is true, maybe we can rewrite it from least to greatest to make it in the proper format for a double inequality. All right, let's look at two examples here. Here we have x plus 1 is less than 4, and negative 2x plus 1 is less than 3. So we might see this and, or we might see uh, the intersection symbol. Again, they're interchangeable. So we're going to solve this, and we're going to write our answer in three different ways. We're going to write it in set notation. We're going to write it in uh, interval notation. And we're going to graph it as well. Not necessarily in that order. So let's solve this one. To solve it, we treat this just like an equal sign, except we, hopefully we recall that if we multiply or divide by negative, we have to change the sign. So let's go ahead and solve this. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And by doing that, I get x is less than 3. So we've solved that. It is in algebraic notation. To put it into set notation, we simply use the braces and x such that x is less than 3. And we close it with a brace. For this one here, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And we see we get negative 2x is less than 2. But now I have to get x by itself. And by doing so, I divide by a negative. Well, when I divide by a negative, it's going to change the sign. Right now, it's negative. If I divide by a negative 2, I get a positive x. There was a sign change. If I divide this side by that coefficient of negative 2, it's positive. 
But if I divide it by a negative 2, it changes its sign to be a negative 1. Because I change the signs by dividing by a negative, I have to remember to change the sign. So we have x is greater than negative 1. So we have this AND statement. And we're going to write this in set notation. So this would be in set notation, x such that x is less than 3 and x such that x is greater than negative 1. We can also write, graph this, just like we've seen in the previous examples. Here, we have x is less than 3. Well, if 3 is here, x is some value less than 3. And on that same number line, I'm going to graph this. x is greater than negative 1. Well, negative 1 would be somewhere over here. And x is greater than negative 1. So we can see the interval that we have is between negative 1 and 3. And because it's an AND statement, I can write this in interval notation, which would be a parenthesis at negative 1, because it doesn't include the endpoint, and a parenthesis at 3, because again, it doesn't include the endpoint. They were less than and greater than symbols, not equal to. Now, we also said an AND statement can be written as a double inequality. If I combine these two into one uh, statement, the least value is negative 1. The greatest value is 3. And if we look at this statement, if I can just flip it over, x is greater than negative 1, so negative 1 is less than x. x is less than 3, and that statement is true. So here we have our solution as a double inequality. We have it in interval notation. We have it in graphic notation. And we also have it in set notation. You can illustrate your answer in any one of these four methods. Be aware of that. And you know, maybe your instructor may ask you to do it a specific way. Know how to do it in each of those. All right, <clears throat> what if we have a double inequality, but it's not simplified? Well, just like we had used the properties of equality here to solve for x, we can do the same thing here, except what we do to one side, we have to do to all three sides instead of just two. So to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 9 from all sides. So 0 minus 9 is negative 9. This value minus 9 is 0. So 0 minus negative 5x is just negative 5x. And 29 minus 9 is 20. Now to get x by itself, I divide all these values by 5. So negative 9 fifths divided by negative 5 is a positive 9 fifths, a negative divided by a negative. And negative 5 divided by negative 5 is a positive 1 for our x value. 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. Now, the reason why I didn't put these symbols in is because I divided by a negative. All the signs changed. This was negative, now it's positive. This was negative, now it's positive. This was positive, now it's negative. The signs changed. So I'm going to remember to change my signs. Now, we look at it. Initially, we might think, oh, that's a double inequality. And if I cover this up, 9 fifths is greater than negative 4. And that statement is true no matter which one I cover. But it's not in its proper format. So we have to rewrite it from least to greatest. Right now, it's from greatest to least. So I'm going to write negative 4 here and 9 fifths here. And negative 4 is less than x because x is greater than negative 4. And x is less than 9 fifths because 9 fifths is greater than x. So we just rearrange it. Now that we have it in its algebraic notation, to write it in set notation, it's as simple as saying x such that this algebraic statement. So that's set notation. The next thing we're going to do is maybe we want to graph it. So I have negative 4, and I have 9 fifths. And the values, because these symbols denote the endpoints aren't included, it is the values in between them. It's an AND statement, their intersection, where they would overlap. They overlap in between their values. And then finally, interval notation. Well, we can take these parentheses. And we can have negative 4, 2, 9 fifths. So we have set notation, graphic notation, and interval notation, all three representations. All right, we're going to go to the last board here. And I have two examples. Here's your opportunity to try these yourself. Make sure you check your work. Write your answer in set notation, 
graph it, and write it in interval notation. And do that for both of these. You have this intersection, and you have this comp or double inequality. Try these yourself, work them out, choose test points, and make sure that you have the correct answer. So this has been section 1.7, part 1. Thank you for watching.